the origin of the universe. Have you ever asked yourself where the universe came from? Was there a beginning to the universe? Or does it just go back and back forever? Typically, naturalists have said that the universe is just eternal and uncaused, and that's all. But there are good reasons, both philosophical and scientific, to doubt that this is the case. Philosophically, the idea of an infinite past is very problematic. Think about it. If the universe never had a beginning, that means that the number of past events in the history of the universe is infinite. But the existence of an actually infinite number of things leads to metaphysical absurdities. To give one example, what is infinity minus infinity? Well, mathematically, you get self-contradictory answers. For example, if you had an infinite number of coins, numbered one, two, three, and so on, to infinity, and I took away all the odd-numbered coins, how many coins would you have left? Well, you'd still have all the even-numbered coins, right? Or an infinity of coins. So infinity minus infinity is infinity. But now suppose instead that I took away all of the coins numbered greater than three. Now how many coins would you have left? Well, just three. So infinity minus infinity is three. And yet in each case, I took away an identical number of coins from an identical number of coins and came up with contradictory results. In fact, you can get any answer when you subtract infinity from infinity from zero to infinity. And for that reason, inverse operations like subtraction and division are simply prohibited in transfinite arithmetic. But that convention doesn't apply to the real world. You can give away whatever coins you want. This shows, I think, that infinity is just a concept or an idea in your mind, not something that exists in reality. David Hilbert, who was perhaps the greatest mathematician of the 20th century, states, and I quote, the infinite is nowhere to be found in reality. It neither exists in nature nor provides a legitimate basis for rational thought. The role that remains for the infinite to play is solely that of an idea. But that entails that since past events are not just ideas in your mind but are real, the number of past events must be finite. Therefore, the series of past events can't go back and back forever. Rather, the universe must have begun to exist. This purely philosophical conclusion has been confirmed by remarkable discoveries in astronomy and astrophysics. In one of the most startling developments of modern science, we now have pretty strong evidence that the universe is not eternal in the past, but had an absolute beginning a finite time ago. For all matter and energy, even physical space and time themselves, came into being at a point in the finite past. As the physicist PCW Davies says, the coming into being of the universe, as discussed in modern science, is not just a matter of imposing some sort of organization upon a previous incoherent state, but literally the coming into being of all physical things from nothing. Now, of course, alternative theories have been proposed over the years to try to avoid this absolute beginning. But none of these theories has commended itself to the majority of the scientific community. In fact, in the year 2003, three cosmologists, Arvind Bord, Alan Guth, and Alexander Vilenkin, were able to prove that any universe, which is on average in a state of cosmic expansion throughout its history, cannot be eternal in the past, but must have a past space-time boundary. This uh, theorem applies not only to the standard model, but also to semi-classical quantum gravity models, inflationary models of the universe, 
and higher dimensional brain cosmologies. Vilenkin pulls no punches. He writes, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, he says, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning." End quote. That problem was nicely captured by Anthony Kenny of Oxford University when he wrote, a proponent of the Big Bang Theory, at least if he is an atheist, must believe that the universe came from nothing and by nothing. But surely that doesn't make sense. For such a conclusion is, in the words of the philosopher of science, Bernhard Kanitscheider, in head-on collision with the most successful ontological commitment in the history of science, namely the metaphysical principle that out of nothing, nothing comes. So why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? Where did it come from? There must have been a cause which brought the universe into being. We can summarize the argument thus far as follows. Premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. Given the truth of the two premises, the conclusion necessarily follows. Now, what sort of cause is this? Well, from the very nature of the case, this cause must be an uncaused, changeless, timeless, and immaterial being which created the universe. It must be uncaused because we've seen there cannot be an infinite regress of causes. So we must come to an absolutely first uncaused cause. It must be timeless and therefore changeless, at least without the universe, because it created time. Because it also created space, it must transcend space as well, and therefore be immaterial, not physical. Moreover, I would argue, this cause must also plausibly be personal. For ask yourself, how else could a timeless cause give rise to a temporal effect with a beginning, like the universe. If the cause were just a mechanically operating set of necessary and sufficient conditions, then the cause could never exist without its effect. Once the sufficient conditions are given, then the effect must be given as well. For example, suppose the cause of water's freezing is the temperatures being below zero degrees centigrade. If the temperature were below zero degrees from eternity past, then any water that was around would be frozen from eternity. It would be impossible for the water just to begin to freeze a finite time ago. So if the cause is permanently present, its effect must be permanently present as well. The only way for the cause to be timeless and for its effect to begin a finite time ago is for the cause to be a personal agent endowed with freedom of the will and who therefore has the ability to spontaneously create a new effect without any antecedent determining conditions. For example, a man who has been sitting from eternity could freely will to stand up and thus we would have an effect with a beginning arise from an eternal cause. And thus we're brought not merely to a transcendent cause of the universe, but to its personal creator.